Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Please give me another 30 seconds and we will begin this Friday kind of unofficial live stream that I, I don't really know why I started doing a few weeks ago. And seems like I like it, you like it, so it's a win-win situation, right? So, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and this is the Friday unofficial and uh, lightweight uh, live stream uh, hosted by me, Paweł Spechalski, and today we will be discussing the Betaflight, Emoflight, and the INAF. And yes, if you feel kind of clickbaited by the title of this video, that yeah, you were clickbaited because no, I will not be really talking much about INAF 2.7, mainly because INAF 2.6 is still rolling out. And uh, in a few minutes, I will exactly explain to you what's happening uh, with the INAF 2.6 and why there was this mess last week with the things like the auto launch and so on and so on and so on. Um, this segment of this channel, which I will be calling probably a Friday special or something like that, like I mentioned just before, is the unofficial or lightweighted stream when I will just try to every week uh, find to try to find um, a leading topic and just talk to you uh, about this topic and every every week it might be completely different topic so today today let's try to talk about what will happen in the FPV community in the last few months because um INAF 2.6 is just in the release of being uh, prepared for the going uh, going live. So we have the release candidate 2 at the moment. And then Betaflight, uh, previous major release of the Betaflight was like when? June, July, or something like that. And that was Betaflight 4.2. So even Betaflight should be slowly preparing to release the next release, which is 4.3. And also I do not really have any uh, first hand information about when this will happen yeah the kind of the calendar says that it should start uh, happening pretty pretty soon so we will take a look at what my, we might expect with the beta flight 4.3 and was it worth waiting and then of course because from time to time i also having helping emu flight with doing some of the development we will also take a look at what uh, emu flight might be preparing for us but first first the what happened with the rc1 of the inf 2.6 um there was a bug a pretty critical bug in the release candidate one that was basically causing a fly away when you were using the airplane uh, auto launch feature so what was happening you just threw this thing in the air into the air and it was like and you know but you have no bloody idea when it went so this is why the 2.6 rc1 was pulled out um why it was why it happened because there was a kind of major refactoring of the auto launch and uh, during the merge to the master there was some um, uh, let's say problem on the development level so luckily this is fixed uh, bear in mind that even the inf 2.6 rc2 has some problems with the auto launch and for example right now when you arm even with the motor stop uh, with using auto launch the motor will spin which is this is obviously a bug and will be fixing the next release candidate or even final and luckily we know about this so so we will be able to to fix it I again Epifani no 737 Max was not really driven by INAP. Uh, that was let's say completely completely different set of problems over there. From what I remember, connected with the angle of attack sensor somehow. Uh, yeah, but this is basically what happens when you try to develop an airplane that is not aerodynamically stable. Yeah, um, this is always the the price to pay. Uh, also on the topic 2.6, no, no H7, maybe 2.6.1 or maybe 2.7. It really depends. I cannot really promise anything because I'm not well. I'm not the one who's working on the H7, so 
so yeah you know how it is um but okay but okay i promised you something about the beta flight 4.3 so let's try to find out what will be happening with the beta flight 4.3 i recently realized that i'm kind of out of loop with the uh, with the beta flight development and to be inside of the loop because kind of kind of while running this, this channel i should be no i should know what's really uh, happening uh, with the development also with the beta flight uh, i wanted to invest some time um, with the with the github to find out what's wrong why it's wrong no it's wrong no nothing is wrong yet to find out what's really happening with the beta flight world oh and i got just the 20 pounds donation thank you very much birdie blair I, I really do appreciate your kind of donation so thank you uh, one more time oh by the way um Still, about uh, INAV 2.6. INAV 2.6 is the last release, uh, major release of INAV that still supports F3 CPUs. Uh, yesterday, I prepared the merge request that disables uh, F3s for the future releases. And as soon as we will get the 2.6 out of the door, this release will be merged and there will be no more F3 in INAV. Uh, don't... Don't feel sorry for those. They had a good run over the last few years, but right now it's really time to, to let them go because A, we were not able even to put any major new functions into the F3s and they are kind of lagging behind. So just clean cut and they are out. But okay, but okay, let's try, try to take a look of, on what will be happening with the beta flight 4.3. One of the amazing things about the open source and the GitHub is that if you are running your uh, project in the decent way, and the guys of the beta flight are running the project in the at least decent way, then you can schedule features into the releases and have the releases scheduled. And uh, this was a battery butter. And as the result, we can filter out what's already merged to any milestone in this case in this case 4.3 is a pull request and is merged and those are five pages of such a things that are currently merged into the beta flight master so we will be able to go through the list and find out if there is something really very interesting like a killer feature that we will be able to uh to say that yeah this is why 4.3 is the best release of the beta flight ever so um minor feature minor feature so looks like the dynamic term filtering will be enabled in the configurator finally the beta flight has a problem that they never uh, ported the INAV uh, setting framework and if they want to add something to the configurator they basically have to have a separate frame for that INAV has the settings framework with one frame to get the data one frame to set data so we do not have to have a new MSP frames every time we are adding something to the configurator so uh, they will add this uh, VBAT compensation yeah who was using vbat compensation uh i know it was like in the beta flight since the probably since the very beginning anybody was using vbat compensation aaron pratt thank you very much for the 10 bucks of your donation amazing thanks mate i really do appreciate it anti-block yeah the bach yes i'm i'm all uh, ah, okay let's not go down that road and let's continue what will be there uh pit mode h7 not important not important not important not important oh um this is interesting looks like all the tiny whoops with the integrated uh free sky compatible receivers which is probably means that all the those tiny whoop boards with the cc 2500 chipset will get the update that will allow them to work with the new acc st 2.1 because after last last year yeah this was last year no this year uh free sky has started to update uh, the new acc st and they kind of broke the backward compatibility so that was kind of like a problem so it looks like beta file beta flight 4.3 will fix that on all those spi connected unofficial of course unofficial 
receiver stress, linearization, CMS over crossfire compression, yeah, improvement, nothing really super important. Mag declination. Oh, so looks like Betaflight is really moving further away from having something like the magnetometer support and the real navigation. Probably they will never add it because with the mag declination gun you gone, you cannot really position hold. Too bad. Uh, new hardware and nothing really interesting. Um, hmm. Oh, this is interesting. This is interesting. Added minimum configuration arming time for a flight to be counted in flight statistic. Oh, okay, this makes sense. So if you are using flight statistic and if you arm for like a second or two, this will not count uh, inside, which is probably a good thing because you do not really want to know if you were armed for like one second, right? So kind of interesting feature. Uh, technical, yeah, technical bug fix. Technical, technical. Uh, oh, and they finally also are getting rid of the D-term RPM filters, which were useless. Um, because it turned out very quickly that the D-term frequency does not really always match to the frequency of the motor. So it never made sense to run RPM filters on the D, on the D-term. Okay, some inter not so very interesting things. Oh, looks like they are doing some of the OSD improvements, which is good because OSD is always a very nice and very important thing. Wrench finders. They are cleaning wrench finders, but why are they cleaning wrench finders when the beta flight is not using wrench finders at all? Good question, right? So what have they cleaned over here? So HCSR04 gone, gone, VL53 gone. So yeah, they are getting rid of... What? I don't get it. So they are getting rid of a lot of unofficial wrench finder supports. Maybe this makes sense because those wrench finders in most of the cases are uh, useless. Okay. Oh, this is, this is interesting. GPS rescue configurable buffer. What is the GPS rescue configurable buffer? Another good thing about the Betaflight project is that they do add a very nice descriptions. Okay, plan the sun and I have no bloody idea what this thing is doing. Altitude. Hmm. Anybody knows what this might be about? About what is configurable buffer on the uh okay altitude. Oh this is about altitude. So they are doing something about the altitude. I wonder what is it? New altitude, current altitude. Okay, so beta flight will be able to re return to home slightly higher than it really started, which makes sense because if you fail safe on the other side of the tree and if you do not try to go higher, then you will probably crash into this tree. So this is actually a good improvement for the GPS rescue. Kudos for the developer for figuring this out. Uh, stay output valitude, separate crossfire. Uh, d -d -d -d. D -d -d -d. So, on this page, nothing really super imposted. Light P boost to anti gravity. Okay, some drivers. Oh yeah, this is something that they are working on. They are working also on the STM32G4 um, flight controllers. I think flight controllers, but please do remember that the STM32G4 family is not very powerful family. So I'm not really 100% sure what's the target for the G4s. But if anybody would like to know how they see it, there's uh, what we have. Uh, 500 kilobytes flash memory from 32. Not 
some SRAM, bitch. Okay, I really would like to know where Beta Flight is going with those G4s. Uh, but we will find out probably when they tell us that this is done. Uh, trust linearization to the configuration. Uh, Okay, they are also doing the disabling stick commands when the hardware ID is active and USB is connected. So you will not be able to have the stick commands when the USB is connected. Is this good? I'm not sure. For example, I'm not the biggest fan that the Betaflight does not allow you to arm with the USB connected by default. Um... I kind of like from time to time to arm my drone with the USB connected, but this is only me and this is my, uh, my speciality. Okay, we have the question from Birdie Blair. Uh, distance measuring in INAV. I've read through the code and if I understand that, it's running variable that adds distance between last GPS location and current one as you fly it. How often is the loop called? Uh, I would say that probably something, uh, the practical difference is around 5 Hz. Um, probably as fast as the G position is updated and usually the position is updated uh, relatively slow, so a few times a second. I would not really count on anything uh, anything else by that. Oh, the British gents will be happy because they will have their units in the OSD. Cool. I personally think that the only good units are the Matrix Unix, but I'm from the, that country that has the Matrix, U, Matrix units since always, so what do I know? And nothing super important on the, this side as well. Feed forward to the PIT OSD, so we will be able to configure feed forward in the OSD. Nice. No. Okay, MSC for H7, H7. Uh, optional high frame rate OSD. Oh, this is important. What do they want to do with the high frame rate on the OSD? I read somewhere about this. So the goal is to have it uh, even 60 or 150 Hertz. Interesting. Uh, I really do wonder what will be the gain of that. Okay, this is interesting. Something that we will have to uh, take a look. One day I will have to combine myself with the Betaflight 4.3 to check because I'm really interested how the faster updates on the OSD will be working. In the Betaflight we are not really trying to have much faster uh, OSD updates, but this is mainly because that the OSD is really take a, taking a lot of time to uh, compute because we have too many elements and also this has to be sent over the SPI to the max chipset so it's taking some time and it was never really our priority so more stuff about the G4 um be per mute okay BB shot what's the BB shot I wonder what is the BB shot black box shot no description and you finally find something that's interesting. Oh, bit banged D shot. Okay, I was hoped this is black box, but this is only bit banged D shot, so I'm wrong. Okay, so the D shot will be even faster, even better. Okay, some more stuff about G4, some more stuff about H7. And looks like so far, ladies and gentlemen, oh, this is interesting, new H7 families, because they will have the H723. Okay. Okay. Clean up H7883. I wonder, uh, anybody knows what is the H783 MCU in the chat? I had no bloody idea. Uh, quick rates. So they are still improving the a lot of rates that they have. Okay. 
Sets anti-gravity gain to zero when the user wants none. Okay, bug fix about the anti-gravity. Update to the serial for way. Okay. Oh, this is in this is interesting. Uh, on beta flight, the F seven two twos are running out of flash space already. Um, that means that there were problems with, for example, adding the GHST protocol from the immersion RC to the beta flight because there was no free flash uh, memory on the H7. And by the way, this is also slowly happening to the INAV. We still have like still 16 kilobytes of the free flash for the H7, H7 to F722. Um, but this memory also will kind of probably quickly be taken and uh, unfortunately the F722s might not be getting all the features in the future because just there is not enough flash. Mm -hmm. One way to fight with that is either to disable some features on the F722 like for example, I don't know who's using some D or some H uh, RX, hands up, who's using, I never even saw a radio that has those uh, protocols enabled. And the other way to find with the low flash is to change the optimization of the GCC compiler, because what does the compiler does when it's compiling? It can have different policies for different file. It can compile file even normal, when this is normal, or for the fast execution, or for the small size. And there is always a price to pay. If you compile normal, then yeah, you are compiling normal. However, if you are compiling for the speed, usually that means the code is taking much more space. Because, for example, instead of having a loop that's executing the same code three times, it's just, a compiler will just put the same code three times in the in the compiled file that means that well the file is bigger however because there is no loop there is no check it's just executing faster on the other hand when you are running with the sites in mind the code runs slower and apparently for the f722 they will be moving something to normal optimization from the fast optimization and uh, optimize Ooh. Oh my. Oh my, so it looks like they are moving everything on 722 to the dash 02 from fast. Hmm. Uh, there will be so probably a small penalty in the performance of the F722. Uh, the 50 kilobytes of uh, free flash are always something super useful, so it's kind of kind of useful to have this mem to have this uh, more flash and the, on top of that we have the immersion rc ghst protocol because the beta flight 4.3 will have the native protocol for the ghost immersion rc ghost by the way um inaf also will be getting ghst protocol because Yesterday or two days ago, I ported the GHST to the INAV, but we are not putting this into INAV 2.6. It will probably wait until INAV 2.61 or INAV 2.7. Why? Because Immersion RC is still working on the telemetry for the for the ghosts. So so yeah, you know how it is, and uh, you basically don't want to release something that might pretty soon change and uh, thank you Robert Ortleb if you don't mind clicking I mean you everybody clicks on the thumbs up button now thanks a lot I do appreciate that so um that's the list of the changes that are already merged into the beta flight 4.3 so far to be honest, I have not seen any of the killer features. Uh, so my gut feeling is that INAV 2. Beta Flight 4.3 will be rather an improvement on what they had what they had before and is pretty awesome, without really adding any new killer features because I've seen nothing. Mostly there were minor improvements, 
but not new features. And the same goes for what's waiting to be merged. Test failing, okay. So no, no killer features. Um, is it bad that the Beta Flight 4.3 probably will not uh, have any killer features? Well, no, not really, because the killer features are useful when you are trying to kill someone. And if you are just one, want to make your firmware slightly better on the each iteration, you do not really have to have a killer features. Uh, please do remember that every time somebody really makes a major change, like for example, when we moved from Beta Flight 2 to Beta Flight 3 and then for 3 to 4 and there were a lot of new features and uh, basic changes major changes to the flight configuration and oh and by the way thanks for the bon appetit i need some sugar no this is not this unfortunately is pure sugar Either way, uh, so there, there there was this moment when a lot of people were saying that the new beta flight is shit and the old beta flight was flying better and the best release of the beta flight was 3.5 point something on something even slightly slightly older. This is um, unfortunately happening from time to time when people do not believe that um, the new stuff is better. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. And we have the question from the anti-block. Have broken 2.4 GHz antenna naked wire. Can I restore it? Yes, you just have to make the wire basically. Be, you have to cut some of the uh, shielding of the thin coax and make the active part slightly longer. Bear in mind that it might slightly affect the performance of the antenna, but you are not really expecting too much. And also, let's remember that though this, this is not even a dipole, but the monopole. It's not even uh, uh, equalized for anything, it will be fine. The wrench will be still fine. Just uh, remove some of the shielding of the wire and you will be pretty golden. So like I have, for example, over here, you just make a small cut on the shield, remove so that the active part of the 2.4 gigahertz antenna is how long? Like two years I had even a video of how long the active part of the antenna should be. Right now, let's take a caliper and measure. For example, this one is 20, 29 millimeters. And the truth to be told, uh, it's not true that the 2.4 gigahertz antennas should be 31.125 millimeter long. This is not true because it's about the speed of the wavelength in the media, not in the in the void, and because the electricity slows down inside of the of the conductor. Uh, you still one quarter of the speed of the wave inside of this medium. So no uh, shiny video stuff. It's not 31 millimeters. Uh, because uh, this you have to remember about the velocity factor and the velocity factor really depends on the on the wire and on the shielding and on the isolation um, like that. So in general, we assume that on the naked wire, the velocity factor is around 0 0.9. So if you take uh, what 331 and uh, let me open the calculator so 31.125 times 0 0.9 is around 28 so usually the really the antenna for the 2.4 gigahertz length should be around 28 millimeters but even if you will not get the length 100 percent fine it will still be sh fine and yes uh, shiny video stuff um, the free sky is known of cutting the antenna some the completely random values just cut and happy and please do remember that as long as you're flying pretty close to yourself it does not really matter about uh, about what's happening uh i'm on yes prophet uh i'm on and uh, yeah I really realize that I like those Friday streams. They are kind of like allow me to relax slightly about the whole week of doing stuff during my daytime job that I don't maybe always love to do. But okay, um, this first half of the hour mainly put us in the information on what the 
beta flight 4.3 is planning and it turns out that those will be mainly only improvement to the current functionalities at least after quickly taking a look at what's planned and what will be happening what's merged there are no major features okay this this is normal so um, probably nobody will be really expecting any major uh, problems anti-block yes java daytime job although recently it's not on mainly java it's rather mainly about the writing documentation and figuring out how to meet the security requirement and having your uh, share of fun with the aws services and so on and so on and so on so i'm in my daytime job i'm doing much less java development than really ever um and sometimes this is really a problem because i do like being a developer and when at work you are not really developing but doing something completely different then at the end of the day you're not okay okay this is what's happening with the beta flight now let's figure out what's happening with the emu flight now the emu flight definitely is slightly slightly slower with the development than the beta flight and INAV and when have they released the last time the official release and i'm not talking about the minor releases let's open so beta fly emu flight 032 was released on the 8th of october and since that there were only 16 commits so nothing super major previously there was the release on the may and if we go to 030 but which one is pre-release um emo flight really does something strange with the versioning because this should be an official release but it's marked as the pre-release while the 3.1 which suggests that it's the minor improvement is marked as verified and official. Eh. But okay, okay. Um, then the last official release that's not only a minor was somewhere in May. That means that the Emu flight have not released anything major for the last how many? This is five, six, seven months. And the 032 was only what altitude, but maybe no, they, they really do. Oh wow, add D shot 2400 and D shot 400 4800. Oh boy, oh boy, oh look, uh, my stuff was released with the <laughs> latest emu flight as well because uh, digital entity found a problem, I fixed the problem so. Uh, so yeah um no jose taxi door don't say it's a sketchy flight they are really nice people over there um so and this is not sketchy it's just something they they just like to think in an even more different way than everybody else and this is good this is good that somebody tries because i really do think that the kalman uh in the emu flight really does amazing stuff but i think this shot 2400 yeah yikes yikes and the determ boost what's the determ boost is the, the determ boost oh this is emo boost yeah and okay so what might me expect when the emo flight will release one more time aaron pratt the major stuff uh, about the emu flight is that the emu flight has the kalman filter and uh, no matter what people might be telling uh, especially the, the people connected with the beta flight this filter really does work and this is really like this, this no this is this is something i have no bloody idea what it does Maybe it's just a super dynamic uh, PT-1, I don't really care, but it does work and your quad just flies better. And this is why the INF 2.6 also has this filter, uh, because after testing without and with, 
can bloody feel the difference that it just flies better without any rpm filtering and stuff like that it's just amazing but okay let's try to figure out what we might expect in the emo flight uh please do remember that they are not adding really a milestone to the pull request so we might not know what will be happening uh over there but uh, let's say that everything that was merged after since october might go into the new release a uh, new target v good rcf4 hmm. what's the v good rcf4 it's really incredible how many new targets are popping on the market and v got rcf4 what's the What's the V got RC V good RC? Oh uh, etching. Okay, it's in some kind of the etching. Firmware V good RC. Okay, another etching. Yeah. Okay, so let's ignore etch etching for a minute. And another target, another target, uh, some GitHub actions improve. Mix, roll, and yo. What does the author wants to have after mixing roll into yo? Hmm. For whoops so then when you up oh, okay okay this is this thing this is the FPD mix or however this thing is called so basically what they want to have is that when you tilt or try to rotate the quad also will follow the movement um so the coordinated turn apparently you will not have to coordinate both sticks at once but only move once and it will roll does it make sense Ugh, not one to judge let's see what's happening inside of the okay we are rolling something blah 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 apply roll your mix but hmm but this is interesting can't the same be done with just the mixer? Hmm. I don't know. Okay, um, never mind the mixing. Mm, ta -ta -ta, some improvement. Link quality improvement. Okay, link new target. Barrow. nothing super important get rid of feature dynamic filter and have a setting dynamic filter instead oh this is this is something super nice from the user perspective because uh, some time ago there was a tendency when writing both INAV, Betaflight and everything else to have features activated by the features feature switch so you have to go to the configurator and flick flip the the feature on to have this uh, out running but it turned out that it's a major pain in the ass to maintain and uh, at the longer run it's just not that pleasant to have those things in the code so uh, they are getting rid of that uh, dynamic filters will be now enabled by the dynamic filter 011 so from the user perspective kind of good and link quality ability to turn off Kalman okay quick flash quick flash why do you want to turn off the Kalman other way to turn off the Kalman filter so you want to see yourself how great it is. <laughs> okay, this is a good one. Yeah, okay. Okay, so yeah, okay. That that that's a good one. That's a good one. So you can really like confirm, okay, yeah, this thing is working. And because this thing is really indeed working, then, then it, it's okay. Uh, yeah. Good choice. Good choice made really good choice. Um is there anything interesting in the chat that I can answer probably right now? 
Shiny video stuff is pretty sure that uh, anything d above the D-shot is pure hyperball. A few months ago, I made a video when I kind of proved that everything about above the one shot one twenty five is really uh, something that really you cannot really feel the difference. If you have not seen the video, let's. Let's try to find it. Let's try to find the video. How the video was called? Um, D-shot? Just a wild guess. Uh, but I wanted to find only mine. Oh yeah, this one. Uh, three months ago. That the D-shot is the best. Uh, we will rather. Sides, we have our I love this hat. I love this hat. Yes, that I really do call this a weak side, that was that the like one of the best purchases of this year. I love the I love the hat. Sometimes in the front of the name are better than the things with the lower number. Because, for example, everybody knows that the D-shot 600 is twice. Better than the D shot 300. And the bottom I line, okay, I will not play the video until the end. If you want to watch the video, then I'm pointing the link in the in the chat right now. Uh, but the fact is that uh, basically after one shot 125, it's really super hard to find out to figure out what changed because it's really like it's flying super 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 almost the same. And you will never probably ever find out the difference between different flavors of the D-Shot. It's impossible. Um, the motor itself has so much delay already that cutting those microseconds in the time for the transfer of the command from the flight controller to the ESC really does not make absolutely any difference. So that is the reality. And I have no idea why only 3000 people decided to watch it. Damn. Okay. What else? Felipe Machado uh, asks if someone is try was trying to do a Kalman filter to a position estimator uh, in place. I did had an attempt to do it, but unfortunately it failed. So um, maybe you can help. There is a pull request for that in the INAF repository, so you can give it a try. I have no idea what went wrong. Never really had enough time to invest in this uh, in this yeah uh, in this endeavor. The problem with the Kalman filter, the problem with the Kalman filter is that the Kalman filter is extremely hard to tune. Uh, if you get all the all the parameters of the Kalman filter right and really like spend a lot of time making this work right, then it works. But tuning of the Kalman is something almost like the magic, and because there is no frequency, you cannot really get the frequency from something. It's the trust level, and it's super complicated. And very often the different solutions, like for example, excuse me, alpha beta filter, maybe are not as effective but are just much more simpler to tune and this is why yeah shiny video stuff uh emu flight rebase any clue when they will move to four point something bf base one more time no bloody idea i know that they wanted to rebase on the latest uh latest master of the beta flight in the beginning of the year um but uh, I have no idea how that proceeded. And no, the funny thing is that after you start adding really like new features to your code base, it's super hard to rebase to something else. Because when you have to rebase like half a year of your work into, into something, something completely different, it usually results in the uh, in a lot of conflicts, problems, and this is not working. It's just a nightmare. And by the way, I have no idea if you okay. Um git people that are in the software development uh, should know that the git is amazing right hands up who is using git in their everyday job while being uh, in the software development hands up me 
and how many people think that the uh, rebase is better than merge quite a lot and i'm you're wrong you're all wrong rebase is evil rebase is evil and you should never rebase or to be more precise uh, you should absolutely never lie to your git um there is a link there is a very good article somewhere in the internet let me find this you should not lie to git ah this one you should not lie uh, if you are in the software development and you are working with Git, then please do read this thing. It's the do not rebase, do not amend, do not squash, and so on and so on and so on. Because at one point you will want to get to your history of your of your Git repository, and uh, when you are rebasing, amending, squashing, and rewriting the history, you will pay the huge price. Uh, so no, rebase is evil, and uh, rebase is so SVN. Okay. <laughs> Philippe Machado, it rebase, it rebase does not depend on the project. It just depends on if the, the, the... In Git, cost of the branch and cost of the merge is super low. Uh, rebase is putting Git closer to the principles of the SVN. However, with the how Git is structured, how the data inside of the repository is structured, it makes the cost of the branching and merging super low. So you can merge left and right. And, at, and with those small merges that are part of the philosophy of the Git, there is very hard to get into the major conflicts. And at the first attempt, when you will have to maintain for the longer time a branch that you will want to rebase on the master, you will want to kill yourself. Because with the rebase, every time you will be rebasing on the, on the master, for example, you will have to resolve the same conflicts over and over and over and over. But okay, I think we are going into slightly uh, wrong direction right now because this, this stream probably never really was about to be about what? About the Git and the programming. So let's go back to the INAV and the INAV 2.7. I personally started already to work on the INAV 2.7. If we will go into the repository of the INAV and if we will filter by the milestone, looky looky, there is a pull request that disables all F3. I'm also right now working on porting of the gy gyro dynamic filters, not the notches, but the dynamic LPFs. I have no idea will this work, but hopefully it will be. And I'm also working on merging, on porting the GHST protocol to IDAF. So far it's working, but we will see. And now the finally the question on when the INF 2.6 will go live. It all depends on the tests. Probably Constantine will build uh, RC3 of the INF 2.6 during the weekend. And if there will be really no other problems, then perhaps uh, late November, early December, we will be able to go live, um, to go out with the INF. Okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think I'm done with my my major topics for today. So now I think we can really like uh, waste an hour or two on answering some of the questions. Or do I have or do I have anything else I would like to share with you today? No, no, I don't. Oh, by the way. Or should I do it? Uh, Anti-block? No, I do not know. I, I know something about KISS, that the KISS exists, and really a lot of people believe that uh, KISS is flying amazingly. However, because the KISS is so, let's say, closed source, and you have to have the correct uh, firmware, correct hardware to run the KISS, I never really felt the need to invest in that. 
so so unfortunately no no practical experience and the uh, What's their secret of perfect flying? Probably that they were just not putting too many features that the users can break. Because trust me, <laughs> whenever the developer opens too many configuration options in the firmware, some people will try to move those values to the max. So sometimes it's just better to have less and less and less options well the kiss kiss uh, killer's philosophy uh, keep it simple right okay uh, ted builds uh, rebuilds and scratch builds is asking about the y4 preset so the rear motors on the multi-rotor in the coaxial configuration i don't think that there is really a need to create such a preset because when we will go to the inav and when we will go to the wiki and then when we will display all the pages there should be a page called custom mixes for exotic setups and i'm pretty sure there should be an y4 mixer you see i bet the configuration copying pasting this to the cli might not work but at least you will be able to put it into the user interface of the INAV so that rear top has no authority on the roll but has plus authority on the pitch and the minus authority on the yaw and so on and so on and so on. So just go there, grab yourself a mixer preset for your exotic setup and you are golden. Like for example, Hexa P6. What the hell is Hexa P6? or octa flat p that really is something not super popular uh, diving falcon fpv express lrs i'm not doing currently any materials about the express rls and i do not really intend to do any materials on the express uh, rls for the for the time being probably the one that you should take a look if you are interested in the express lrs is the uh mark spatz uh from the uav tech he's doing some of the videos about the express lrs and you should i really you should uh, take a look at what what he's doing because a few, few weeks ago he did a video about how to flash r9m with the express lrs and this week he did a video of how to flash the receivers when the our express lrs so go there uh, if you don't know the the link then just go to the youtubes and type uav eh. and like i said he has the video about for example how to flashing air 9 mm so Felipe Machado asks, is there is a way to make MSP reporting always set of messages or is it just ask report? Uh, the MSP protocol is a pull push. So the flight controller is the slave. And if you want to get any data, you have to ask for the data. So first, uh, for example, when you want to get the, I don't know, the voltage information you have to ask for a flight controller to give you the frame uh, that you want to get so uh, flight controller is not sending any frames you have to ask for the each frame uh, in independently Pierre Havelar was able to revive a dead R9MM flashing with Express LRS. That means that the receiver was not dead, because if it was dead, you will not be able to flash it. Probably what happened, the bootloader on the R9MM got destroyed, and this is why you were not able to flash it via the, uh, via the uh, smart port. And I'm not sure if you can flash the official firmware via the, for example, the Estelink. No really bloody idea, but uh, that's just a proof that the receiver was not dead. Only the firmware was kind of not 
Um, on the Express LRS, I know that people are making those claims that this is the best thing since the sliced bread and, and because it's doing oh, so many, so many updates and this is so great, fantastic. I, yeah, 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 I, I don't believe the numbers. Uh, I, I did some tests and to be honest, I'm not able to tell the difference between, let's say, 100 hertz and 200 hertz. So, why? Um... Prophet uh, has a question about me further testing the FRM302. No, I'm not further testing FRM302. I decided that I did whatever I could for the system and that I will not invest actually many much of the of my time into the into the promotion of the FRM302 because clearly the fly sky is not really interested in selling those products. If they were, they would be, for example, I don't know, publishing the... Uh, they would be, for example, publishing the firmware uh, for the for the FRM302. And if you look at their web page, that there you still cannot even download the FRM development firmware that allows you to use this with the OpenTX in the serial mode. Um, the, and if I'm correct, my video about uh, setting up FRM302 for the OpenTX is the only video out there. And like I said in a moment ago, if Flysky is not really interested in making sales of that and promoting this, then... No, I'm not getting paid for promoting this stuff, so... Shiny video staff heard about DisplayPort MSP. What's the deal with that? DisplayPort MSP? E, uh, what? What? Um, I'm not sure I'm following. Anti-block. Is it possible to use F411 MATEC uh, INAP missions? I think so. I think the F411 has the uh, has the missions uh, built in. At least that's my assumption over here. I don't think that it has does not have enough uh, flash to do it, so it should be running. Okay, gents. Uh, this was supposed to be rather uh, short short stream after all so if there are any questions uh, you would like me to answer now probably is the the moment that you should ask them uh, and if not then we will probably just start finishing slowly um, I would like to watch a good movie I really would like to watch a good movie today in the evening to relax a little Maybe Lord of the Rings Extended Edition? That's always a good idea, right? Brewer C has a question how to map a motor output to a Pino, remove it from target C and add Pino definitions in target H. Yes, that's basically what you will have to do to remap a motor as a pin EO. Please do remember that if there are timed conflicts with other outputs, uh, this might not work. Mandalorian second season is out. Uh, to be honest, I got stuck in the middle of the first season of the Mandalorian and uh, never really finished this. Uh, somehow, uh, I, I think I prefer Stargate, to be honest. And with Stargate recently, I'm stuck at the half of the seventh season. So maybe I should go back to the Stargate. Yeah. Okay. Shiny video stuff. Uh, seems like people are stuck trying to run fast OSD for the new digital system MSP. Cannot MSP cannot support all the elements updating all the same time at the max baud rate. Um, that is it. MSP fault. 
But and do you really have to have all the data taken from the flight controller at the same time? Uh, I'm not really 100% sure. Queen Gambit. Uh, my wife and older daughter watched the Queen Gambit and liked it very much. And actually the Queen Gambit is on my watch list. But currently on my watch list there are Enola Holmes. I still have to finish the Lucifer. I'm at four, fifth season. Uh, then I wanted to watch Umbrella Academy. And then, only then, probably I will have time for the Queen's Gambit. As you can see, I'm slightly behind the, the schedule. Oh, 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 by the way, by the way, by the way, I just learned like a few days ago that the, the Grand Tour Madagascar has been not maybe released, but will be available on the 18th of the December. I've been bloody waiting one year for the next episode of the Grand Tour. And um, this is something I definitely will want to watch without without the, the any kind of the delay. And also the boys. Oh, bloody hell. There are so many series and videos and movies I have not watched yet. Oh, JC Lab, hello, mate. Dan Multi asks if I know any charger that has its own PSU and operates relatively quietly. Um, so. I have this Toolkit RC M4Q. I released a material about this uh, thing on Monday. It's not, maybe not the quietest one, but it never really... Oh, excuse me. Uh, struck me as the super, super, super loud. Uh, it was not quiet as well, uh, so don't know. And... Uh, I also got this thing. Uh, this is the Hobby Mate D6 Dual Light with the external PSU. Uh, so the PSU is this thing. You put this thing, they have magnets so they are not falling apart. Unfortunately, the charger itself is probably not that bad, but the, there is a fan inside of the PSU. And it's also bloody loud. Uh, really like extremely loud stuff. And so I cannot really recommend that crap. <sighs> Too bad. Okay. I think this is really all for today. Uh, so what's the plan? What's the plan for the next days? Uh, we shall meet each other tomorrow at 7 p.m when I will have the regular regular questions and answer to our long uh, lights light not the light live stream and will it will be bloody awesome uh hopefully <laughs> at least I hope it will be uh, bloody awesome and I think I can like spend another few minutes to tell you what's in the schedule for the next few weeks on the channel because if you don't know i have this web page somewhere should be here a pp shopping list and there is a page called schedule and i'm putting what will be available in form of the videos and for example on monday we will have a super nice video about how to migrate from beta flight to INAF 2.6 in 22 minutes i will explain everyone how to migrate from beta flight to INAF and uh, have a lot of fun with your mini quad and then on friday for example we will find out which is the best flight controller firmware is it ardu pilot beta flight INAF or maybe emu flight so there are really like 
interesting topics on the on the channel in the next uh, few few weeks but in the meantime um i think this, this is definitely all for today so thank you very much for watching we will meet each other on the live stream tomorrow at 7 p.m central european time so exactly the same time as this uh, stream and then we will be just talking about all the topics that you are interested in so this will be mainly about the questions and answer and christian todorov no star trek discovery no I, I i i i went through the first season of that crap but i don't want to do anything with the star trek discovery that's just the level of what the fact was like so so no okay um thank you very much and until the next one bye bye